Okay. Okay, now we're recording. Now say anything you want. Anything I want. Yeah. This is like behind the scenes. So this is like the pre, even even before we start the show. Yeah. This is like the behind the scenes. Yeah. 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 I hate that. <laughs> Getting the old camera set up. Um, oh, that's what I didn't do. Here. So they can hear us on this video. Just clip it somewhere near your... Somewhere near you. Where's the microphone part right there? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, now we should be able to go just about anywhere and here on the video. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Oh, I feel a sneeze coming. Oh, I better get some napkins. Better get some napacons. Okay. Oh, I got them on my fucker right here. There you go. Okay. I gotta try not to shake the table too much because that may turn. Why is that? Okay. Oh, you know what I have noticed? What? My cough's like. Oh, almost gone. I oh, really? <clears throat> yeah, no it. cough button tonight? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be. Is that what you're saying? No cough button? Oh, my goodness. How about that? Okay. Okay, you were saying Julie texted. Julie texted. Todd and Curtis just wanted to say hi and let Curtis know that was really cruel posting all those pictures of y'all in sunny, warm Florida while us back here in Oakieville were freezing our at off. <laughs> Yes, I was envious, but you could have brought some of that sunshine and warmth back with you, dude. Love you. And I said, totally agree, Julie, but I'm not letting him know it gets to us. Nah. <laughs> Stay warm. He goes, she goes, good point. And then, oops, didn't mean to do that. And then Richard texted. Who? Richard Cuevas. Oh, Richard. Richard. Uh, he says... Hey Curtis and Todd, thanks for doing the David Soul uh, David Star David Soul Starsky and Hutch episode. I like to watch episodes of those shows and try to spot actors that were just getting started, and we're still young. Back Christy McNichol, Jan Smithers from WKRP, and Linda Carter were all in episodes of Starsky and Hutch. Linda Carter was in a two-part episode which she played a Las Vegas showgirl. This began or this began season two, I believe. Also, Lynn Marta, an actress that was David Soul's girlfriend, who also appeared in Starsky and Hutch, recently died. Oh, you might remember her if you see some pictures of her. Cool. Oh. Hmm. Home. Thanks, man. Okay. Uh, well, no. Did Dave call? I don't know, haven't looked yet. Got a couple calls, should have. I don't know if Dave knew we were not recording last week or not. He texted a while ago, I told him, or commented somewhere. Yeah, on Facebook. I'm confused, I'm, I'm about ready to get back to a regular schedule. <laughs> it has, seems like it's been a while. Yeah, because you're Mr. Regularity. You get your... So somebody's in your table at McAllister's? Yeah. <laughs> did you go up and say, uh, excuse me? I about did. I should have. <laughs> like, hey, lady! <clears throat> what was that? Uh, probably my phone. I forgot. I No, no, it was actually my iPad. I forgot to turn off my phone's ringy-dingy. Hopefully I don't get a phone call. Well, I'm ringy-dingy. <clears throat> Gretchen called. Gretchen called. Uh oh, twice. <clears throat> okay, are we ready? <laughs> are we listening? How we li go? See if play it there. See if. What day was and this? Two days ago. Leash and all that stuff. So, anyway, I'm going to let you know now. 
this might be multiple parts. This might be, you know, two or three messages. Uh-oh. So, it is. It's Tim. Uh, this is Message from Gretchen, part one. Um, first of all, welcome back to reality, Curtis. And Todd, I, I did add you to my, my list of people that I pray for because of your head cooties. <laughs> and, and I think maybe cooties. you should try to get uh, yourself into an episode of Monsters Inside Me, if they still do that show. Um, anyway, uh, besides that, I'm a blockhead. I'm such a blockhead. Okay, and you can say that. You can call me a blockhead. You can say on your show, Gretchen... You're a blockhead. You're being awful nice about this. The fact that I, like, corrected you about Sigmund and the sea monster. <laughs> that was Kevin. And, like, the, the, the very phrase that I used to, like, randomly pick to mock you about it, the snarky comment that I decided to use, was the actual premise of the show. So... I'm a blockhead. Please call me a blockhead. Yeah, Please you're not me. a blockhead. I'm a blockhead. And it wasn't and snarky. I was very little when I watched it in the 70s, anyway. So, um, to make up for the, uh, the, the Sigmund uh, debacle, <laughs> um, this is what I've decided to do. Here, here is my short report on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. So, did you know that Billy Barty played Sigmund? I did Some not other know guy, that. Um, voiced him, but Billy Barty played Sigmund. Wow. And, and he was kicked out of his family because he couldn't scare humans. He had two brothers whose names were Blurp and Slurp, and he also had his parents, Sweet Mama Ooze and Big Daddy Ooze. Sweet Mama was... Um, supposed to be fashioned after Phyllis Diller, and Big Daddy was uh, basically a takeoff on Archie Bunker. And, by the way, Big Daddy's name was Melvin. Uh, Also, Blurp, his brother Blurp, was supposed to be like Gomer Pyle, and Slurp wasn't supposed to be like anybody, I guess they... I'm going to have to watch some of those old episodes. I haven't seen... uh, Also... There was Sheldon the Sea Genie, played by the one and only Rip Taylor. Oh, yeah. And, Remember that. Uh, did you know that while filming the first episode of the second season, a hot light fell and started a fire that destroyed all of the sets and most of the costumes and the props? Oh, bummer. So they had to film the rest of the season with, like, all minimal sets and props. And their neighbor was played by Margaret Hamilton, who also played the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. And <laughs> did you know that Sigmund and the Sea Monsters was the very first cross Saturday morning show to go more than one season? It's true. Now we're going to have to do a whole episode uh, also, on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Let's see. Um, they have 11 songs on Johnny Whitaker's album. He did a whole album. She got time ran out. I didn't like know it. Johnny Whitaker did an album. I'll have to look that up. Dot. This is Message from Gretchen, part two. So you have a count of five to abort this message and <laughs> listen to message one first. One banana, two <laughs> banana, three banana, four banana, five banana. Okay, part two. Anyway, so Johnny Whitaker released an album and it had 11 songs on it and they were all about Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Wow. Uh, what else? Uh, in 2017, Amazon decided to do a reboot of Sigmund and the Sea Monsters and it was seven episodes. And Johnny Whitaker did play a part in it, but I don't think there was anybody else on the show or any other names that I recognize about it. Uh, okay, that's, that concludes my, my report on um, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, and I hope it redeems me just a little bit. But Redeemed. Call me a blockhead. I'm a blockhead. <clears throat> Besides that, um, so Curtis, my friend Sarah and I, we 
we went to see the holdovers, I think the same weekend that you did, and we loved it, totally loved it. And I loved the, um, the score, I love the score. Back in, back in the 70s, and I think probably into the 80s, there was a station in New York, New Jersey area that was called the 105.1 FM called WRSM, and they played basically music, like, like um, just instrumental versions of all different songs. And it's kind of part of my brother Charlie's and my childhood, because my father used to always have it on the radio when he was down in his dark room, because he was a photographer and he would be developing prints and stuff, and he would always have that on. So it's like etched in our souls as part of our childhood. So we like all sorts of music, but then people will be surprised that <laughs> we both like instrumental like music, elevator music. But there was a whole lot of that in, in the holdovers. So I want to see if I can actually get that, that score, like if they have it on the CD. I think I will too. Anyway, I think, <clears throat> I think that's it. So I hope my little report on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters has redeemed me at least a little bit. Because, man, do I feel like an idiot. <laughs> it's not a new feeling to me, actually. It, I feel quite at home feeling like an idiot. Anyhow, so, um, yeah. All is good. Happy winter, and bye. <laughs> bye. Bailey does that, too. All is good. Nothing from Dave this week. Nothing from Dave? Well, he's probably confused. Oh, no. No yeah. phone call from Dave? Hey, guys. <laughs> we could oh. make one up. Hey, uh, okay, so... No phone call from Dave. Okay, yeah. well. So, let me get this. I, I, well, I can't text him because my phone's over there. I was going to say, shall I text him and tell him he needs to call in real quick? I told him. I told him we were going to be... Uh, no? I wonder if he's at war... It's but he calls in the night before, doesn't he? Yeah, he calls in like at 2 o'clock on Monday morning. I wonder why, huh? Or Tuesday morning. I wonder why he didn't call. I don't know. Oh, well. <clears throat> okay. It's not a big one. He'd be all right. Whatever. Whatever. I had the, uh, I had the, uh, what did I do with it? Oh, I didn't put it, no. Here we go. What are we doing? Oh, I was going to play the theme, the opening song for Wonderful World of Disney. Before we do our theme song? No, 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 no. Oh. I, just, I just wanted to get it ready. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Cute. I've got it queued up, too, if you can't get it. Except mine's on YouTube, so. I had it. I had it. What to do with it? Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Here it is. I got it. If you don't got it, I got it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I had it. I had it all queued up, and I just set it down. I said, oh, no, I'm not going to touch it. And it went away. What'd you have? Did you have YouTube? Or where'd you have it at? Amazon Music. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I could have. should have gone to YouTube. That'd probably been better. Well, except you got to wait on the darn commercial. No. Well, if you queue it up, like let the commercial play and then pause it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just I need to turn the volume down until, okay. Okay. So video's going for the pre-show and the behind the scenes. Uh, got my iPad going. That's, that's ready to go there. Hey, I got my napkins, got my little drinky poo. Just fire this guy up. He's fired up. He's fired up. Uh, okay. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Nice and big waves like you like. I see the waves. I see the waves. <laughs> uh, I forgot what we do now. Uh, we play the music. Where's the music? Play the music. Okay. Playing music now. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, 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 bow.
Bow, Too bad bow. they can't hear the music. One of these days, we'll get it all so it all works together. One of these days, we're going to have this big, beautiful, fancy, shiny studio. With a production guy. Man. One day. One, day, one day. one of these days. Somebody answer that phone. It's always ringing. Every night. Every time we podcast, somebody calls. Nobody ever I answers a tongue up. Well, you know. What? At least our intro music gave us a phone call because Dave, Dave sure didn't. <laughs> Dave. Dave, have we confused you sorry, so Dave. much that you don't know when we're podcasting anymore? Sorry, Dave. It's, I know it's confusing. Yeah, because we did that around Christmas because I was gone. And then we just for... Like, but we didn't really tell everybody last week that... Or the week before that last week's episode was recorded before... The week before's episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so Dave commented somewhere. He's like, so are we back to normal? Like, yeah, back to normal. And then Curtis is like, uh, I got to go to Florida. <laughs> and I'm like, oops. Uh, sorry, Dave. Anyway. We are now back to normal for as long as possible. As long as possible. Might be a little hiccup in April. Depends on my grandbaby being born and all that stuff. But we'll deal with that when we get there. So anyway, we should be regular for a while. So well, welcome to another episode of the 70s Buzz Podcast. Guys can hit us up on the official Buzzhead hotline, 580-541-3805. You can text us like uh, Julie did. You can call us like Gretchen did. Or you can email us like this whole plethora of guys I've got did. Richard, at, don't forget Richard texted too. Uh, Richard texted. Uh or you can email buzz at buzzheadmedia.com like Greg, Philip, Staten, Larry, Jeffrey. I got all kinds of messages. So so being so not doing our episodes in a row. Yeah. Like we missed all last week. So I got like a like two weeks worth of messages I've got to catch up on. So we'll get through it. Oh, are you ready? Well let, let's do phone calls. Gretchen oh. Gretchen had a good a great okay. phone call. Uh Gretchen. Gretchen had a great phone call, um, a two-part phone call, kind of like Dave. Sometimes Dave goes over. Uh, and uh, no, absolutely not, Gretchen. You are not a blockhead. No. She was apologizing for the Sigmund, what'd she call it? Uh, Sigmund. Sigmund the sea monster. And no, the, Yeah, Sigmund the sea monster. The sea monster. Yeah, so. Yeah. And we, had, we were like, no, it's Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. It's not a big deal. So what she did was she took a deep dive <laughs> into Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, gave us all kinds of uh, trivia. And so, so now I kind of feel like we're going to have to do a whole episode. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if we can do a whole episode on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, but maybe Johnny Whitaker. And that. I, I don't know. We'll figure out something. But. Yeah. Anyway, she gave us lots of info. Yeah, and she also commented. Oh, speaking of Johnny Whitaker, um, she let us know that he put out. A, he he had an album with eleven songs, and they were all about Sigmund and the Sea Monster. I'll have to dig dig that up on vinyl if possible. Oh, I'm not sure it's out there somewhere. And uh, she also saw the holdovers like you did and loved it. Loved the score. Loved all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, and no, we did not know Billy Barty played Sigmund. I did not know that. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's what uh, Gretchen called in. Richard Cuevas texted in. He uh, he he enjoyed the uh, David Soul, Starsky and Hutch episode. Uh, he had some info about people on there that, you know, he likes to watch and see if he can see people before they were famous. Uh, there was quite a few on there. Julie texted. Um, she says, thanks, Curtis, for being so cruel with the warm pictures from Florida. Uh, while we back here in Okieville uh, froze our butt off. Uh, yeah. Because it got cold. It got cold. It's been cold all over the place except Florida. And it did get <laughs> cool. Like, we went to watch fireworks Wednesday night, and it got cool. But uh, Cool? Like 50? No, like it was, I think it was high 40s. Ooh. And wind. Oh. And so, yeah, so it got it, it got a little chilly. So that's when it was like zero here. Probably, yeah. yeah. Is that that cold from? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I was uh, away for seven, eight days. I mean, what day did you get back? I got back on late, like two a.m. 
Thursday night. So you were gone. Eight, I left. Eight, eight, I left Wednesday. Wednesday yeah. morning. Yeah. So eight eight days. Yeah. So so I was gone to Disney for eight days. You guys listen to Buzzhead Radio tonight. Tonight's episode of Buzzhead Radio, and I'll talk about the Disney trip, uh, and because I don't want to get too deep into it here, because <laughs> tons of stuff going on. Um, did you hear that Billy Joel is coming out with a new song? A new song? First in 17 years. Kind of like the Stones did. Yeah, and so he ha- he's kind of teasing it, and he hasn't he hasn't announced if it's going to be. Um, an album right now it's going to be he's releasing the single on February 1st cool and you can buy it you can pre-order now but the, on February 1st you can buy it as a 7 inch uh, vinyl he has teased it on and I can't remember he in his description of it it's called turn the lights back on and he's kind of wondering has he waited too long for the lights to come back on I think he's oh. kind of like have you guys forgotten me or are you? And so he's basically, it sounds like he's going to kind of go back to his original roots kind of music. So this is the snippet. This is all that anybody has gotten so far. Excuse me. Just one color. There you go. That's it? That's all he's released right so far. He's teasing everybody. But that kind of... So Staten called a couple of weeks ago and said that Stevie Nicks yeah. was going to be down in the Dallas area with Billy Joel. With Billy Joel. Yeah. And I can't remember what the date was. But it's after February 1st, so... I wonder if that might be the first place he plays the song in public, Ooh. like live. Ooh. So that might be kind of a, Ooh. I don't know. We'll have to, I can't remember what that date was. Um, we'll have to look that up. So anyway, um, and then Gretchen mentioned The Holdovers. Wanted to let everybody know that they have released the Oscar nominations. The Holdovers, and the reason I mention it on this show, is because it's set in 1970 and it's filmed... And the sound and everything is like if the movie had been made in 1970. It is up for Best Picture. And then Giamatti is up for Best Actor. Uh, Divine Joy Randolph is up for Actress in a Supporting Role. It's also up for Nominated for Original Screenplay and Best Editing. So I'm pretty sure... I'm going to go out on a limb and say uh, Paul is going to win Best Actor and Divine is going to win Best Supporting Actress. Oh, very cool. Because they both won Golden Globes. And it kind of kind of follows that, but not exactly. Mm. Uh, March 9th. March 9th is the Stevie Nicks. Billy Joel concert, yeah. March it's a, it's a Saturday. 9th. March 9th. That's like the weekend after we go <clears throat> to Wicked in the city. I don't know. We'll have to check into that. Um, okay, so I got some emails. I get these out of the way real quick. So Larry Friedrich uh, emailed. He says, hey, fellas, finally, Hi, got, a, finally got around to watching the... Si- oh, okay, so that's why I'm videoing this. It's kind of behind the scenes. Here, here he's, he's got a really good email here that we'll have to think about how to do this or if we're going to do it. He says, I finally got around to watching the 70s buzz behind the scenes show on YouTube. I got to thinking I for one would be willing to pay $5 a month if you would post each episode on YouTube. It just adds another level of interest to the podcast. Also, you could uh, occasionally do another bonus video showing your 70s hangouts or other 70s related content. Another thing I was thinking for your Patreon was I would pay to have one more podcast each week maybe even every other week as a bonus for paying for the paying listeners. I do find your podcast very enjoyable and relatable. Oh, so you can do a podcast that just the Patreon uh, customers? We can actually do it now on Spreaker. Spreaker just came out with the same option. Oh. So people can subscribe to us on Spreaker now like they could on Patreon, 
and we can put out special episodes on Spreaker that only subscribers would be able to hear. Oh. So we don't. We actually don't need have to go through Patreon anymore. We could actually do all this through Spreaker now. But on Patreon, you get paid. Well, on Spreaker, they would pay too. Oh. It's a paid subscription. Oh. And you on both of them, you can set the amount. So. Oh. Yeah, it's something that Spreaker. Ju- it's funny that he emailed this because it Patreon just started it like within the last month. Spreaker did. Spreaker. Yeah. So anyway, so we may, uh, so that's why I'm, I kind of gave you guys a little more like the pre-show, kind of what Todd and I talk about and the listening to the phone calls. That's, so if you're just listening to this podcast, if you go watch us on, uh, right now it's on Curtis Tucker on YouTube, you'll see the before we start recording part of the show. And so that's kind of what, um, those episodes would be like, they would be like the behind the scenes, and like if we had some stuff in here, we could show you guys that people that just listen wouldn't get to see. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we will work on that, Larry. Love the idea. Uh, Greg Dodge uh, sent more ideas. Uh, he sent a, some a good information on bizarre TV in the seventies oh. as an episode. My Hartman, my Hartman. Uh, and then sent a chart. He he made this chart of the most popular TV shows in the seventies by Nielsen rating. But then he factor, and I'll have to. When we do the episode, or if we do it on Facebook Live, I'll tell you how he did it. Um, so he sent it to Staten and I, and then Staten was like, "Yeah, but you know, maybe you didn't figure in this." And so Greg redid it and came out with another. I think it's like the top twenty or twenty-five list. And so between the two, they came up with this list of the most popular TV shows in the 70s. And so we may do that on the next Facebook Live. Okay. Or we may make an episode out of it. I don't know. But anyway, thanks, Greg. We appreciate that. And then Philip Carey, uh, he sent uh, an idea, because you and I had mentioned it, of doing killer animal movies of the 70s, <laughs> where kind of horror movies, but the, the it's not a person, it's an animal. And he sent a whole list of movies with animal killers in it, and ton of them I'd never heard of. And then he sent me about six audio movie trailers for those movies. Oh, so cool. we like so we got like almost a whole episode there. So wow. thanks for that, Philip. Um, Staten emailed a couple times. Um, he said you guys were discussing why they didn't change the. So I was kind of saying why is Hawaii Five O still Hawaii Five O? Why not if it's all new? Why not just come up with your own new names and. He was saying, you know, that probably because people like us, the nostalgia, we watch it because it's got the same, you know, we think of it as being the old show uh, to increase audience. Uh, let's see, Hawaii Five O was named that because Hawaii is the 50th state. Um, so anyway, input there. <laughs> I did not know that. I never thought about it. I, th- I guess I thought it had something to do with maybe a pol- the like, yeah one out of twelve or yeah yeah so anyway uh, info for Satan. then he also talked about uh, and he's been emailing for the last two weeks so the so I'm trying to catch up um, he talked about th- so he so Staten is listening to old episodes to make the database and so he's talking about episodes that are in the past but he was just listening to the mixtapes of the seventies. He talking about sunshine on my shoulders. Sunshine. How he and I, on my shoulders. you know, always have memories of that. So we went to Tonkawa, and he was competing in a singing competition, and he was sick when we went, and so he threw up before he went on stage, sang the song, and then threw up when he got off the stage, and then he made it to the finals, and then when he was doing the finals, I'd kind of forgotten he hiccuped. Uh, in the middle of the song and, oh. and kind of screwed his chances oh. for winning. He had a hiccup. He had a hiccup, <laughs> but an actual hiccup. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. And then he, then I mentioned that uh, a band had come to Enid High in St. Karen, Wayward Son. He, he remembers the band coming, but does not remember the name. Um, and then he remembers us recording songs off the radio. He said his top 10 songs... Recording off the radio would have been Karen, Wayward Son, Riding the Storm Out, More Than a Feeling, Smoking, Fox on the Run, Come Sail Away, I Want You to Want Me, Undercover Angel, Life in the Fast Lane, and Dreamweaver. And then Ava Moore, the Colorado student. Oh, yeah, 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 She yeah. said, oh, my God, thank you so much for the shout-out. Love you guys. Oh, so she just now heard that? 
when again she She's these, these people have emailed like you know days ago or a yeah. week ago so i'm just well now, yeah and she's listening she's probably episodes back no this is ava she's actually just listening to the new ones i don't know that she's gone back and listened to any old ones oh yeah so we shouted out to her i don't know episode or two ago oh did we yeah oh, well. so and then jeffrey last email jeffrey uh from the netherlands uh said hey buzzheads do you know the movie that 70s girl it's a movie set during the 70s about four girls, one of whom is a lesbian hippie. Have you ever heard of the, that 70s girl? No, but... And he sent a graphic, like a picture of the girls from the show. So anyway, we might we have not, Jeffrey, but we will look into that. Hmm. And I don't know... Hang on. Was that with Ben Affleck? I have no idea. I don't... I doubt it. That 70s girl. Anyway. Okay. Knowing Jeffrey, it's probably a porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> I jest, I jest. Okay. So anyway, that's all of our pre-show stuff. And again, uh, I'll be talking about Disney, my Disney trip on Buzzhead Radio tonight, but I uh, thought it would be kind of fun to uh, also do a Disney episode for the 70s buzz. Uh, since we're kind of going to be in that mode anyway, so... No, that's not with Ben Affleck. Uh, yeah, I was going to say if it was, I probably would have heard of it. Um, here we go. Hang on. Now, is that the wonderful world of Disney? Yes. Oh, I think I missed most of it. Anyway. Anyway. That was the... So, tonight's episode is all about the wonderful world of Disney. <sighs> Yay! Yeah, we... Uh, <clears throat> I was trying to remember... Well, that's my... You know who. Um, I've been getting weird notifications. She'll, like, just tell me, Hey, so-and-so has done this much at the box office this week. I'm like, I didn't... I've never told her to do that. Anyway. Uh... I was trying to remember which uh, uh, NBC, ABC, or CBS, which it was on. It was on all of them. Yeah, and it ran for a very long time. But when we watched it, mainly in the 70s, it was I NBC. Was, the Wonderful World it was NBC. Wasn't was it, it NBC? Well, let me tell you. Wonderful World of Disney from 69 to 79 was NBC. Okay. Yes. And it was Sunday night. Sunday night, yeah. 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 So, and that's what I was going to ask you, what you like actually remember. But what I didn't realize, so right before it was the wonderful world, world of color. Dip, so it started, was it in 54? Yeah. Um, so there was lots of episodes in the 50s, lots of episodes in the 60s. Oh, yeah. And then it even, I mean, I think it's still going today on the Disney Channel. It re-upped, yeah. Yeah. It and, stopped for a while. but Yeah. So it was on the major three, 80s, 90s, and still going. But... You and I know that the best episodes <laughs> of the wonderful world of Disney were in the 70s. And why is that, Mr. Wheeler? Because it why was the greatest decade you known know to man. man. Yes, it was. See, that wasn't planned. See, there was no, there was no signal. There's, there's there was not, no sign. There's no, there's hardly any planning on this there, at all. There's no rhyme or reason when that then happens. Yeah, or for most of the stuff that we do. <laughs> yeah. Which so. I think, you know, adds to it. Yeah, so... Out of all of the, I mean, that specifically is a show I remember being on Sunday night. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of like Sunday night, especially during the school year, you pretty much had to be in on Sunday night, and so you were watching TV. and Right and after dinner. Right after dinner, and you know, you're going to have to go to bed at like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Yeah, what did it come on, like at 6? I think 6, yeah. Yeah, around yeah. here anyway. And that's funny that, yeah, that we remember time and... And I would have probably, if you had asked me, I'd have said ABC for some reason, and I don't know why. Oh, in, in the 70s? Yeah, what, what channel it was on, but no. um, yeah, but NBC, um, but I do, I mean, so I think I watched it every week. I can't, I, I mean, it was one of those shows that I think I watched religiously, but had you asked me, tell me about one episode of The Wonderful World of Disney. Well, they all kind of blur into each other. 
I had, I, um, w before I started researching this episode, I was like, what was the wonderful world of Disney? I don't, I mean, I was like, I don't really remember any well, it was... specific character. I don't remember any episode. And come to find out, it wasn't, it wasn't. It was... It was original works, cartoons, documentaries, and educational shorts. Yeah. And a lot of times, and the ones that I remember the most are when they took a Disney movie mm -hmm. and like chopped it and you'd watch half of it one week and have to have to wait freaking seven days to watch the second half. Right. So it was a movie that previously was at the movie theater. A lot of, you know, like the big ones, but they had made for a TV movie. I mean, they had zillions of, how many movies, how much did they make? Tons. I mean, as far as like films and movies and. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've literally got the entire list of every episode in the seventies here. Um, and then they would do specials, like if Mickey Mouse, like they did a Mickey's 50th uh, in 1978. Uh, so they would do things like that. But usually it was just some Disney, weird, random Disney movie. Mm -hmm. um, Shadow of Fear or Ride a Wild Pony, Never a Dull Moment, The Omega Connection, Born to Run. So do you remember any specific episodes from back then? Was the parent trap in the 70s? Yes. Okay. I believe it was yes. around 76, I think. Okay. With, uh, she's on a movie right now, a show right now. Jodie Foster? Was it not Jodie Foster? Who was in Parent Trap? I can't, in the first one. Which I one? There's been so many. Yeah, I was going to say, in the Disney 70s one. I, oh, they're yelling at their devices right now. Yeah. The, what I remember most was the Kurt Russell movies. Oh, yeah. Because oh, he, yeah. oh, yeah. he was like a, a young boy, and he was always... I, I do remember the Million Dollar Duck, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then the Shaggy movies. The Shaggy, shaggy Dog. Shaggy there was the Shaggy Dog. Shaggy D.A. Uh, uh, who was in Parent Trap? I don't know if I have that information. Well, there's different ones, like I said. There's the ones in the, the 90s. One's in the... Haley Mills. Haley Mills, yeah. Yeah, Haley Mills. Uh, but that was 61, but we saw it in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, they, that, those, one of those girls. Yep, sure enough. Yeah. And I like that version better. Oh, the, the new, the one after that one was pretty good. Which one was that? I think it had Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, it was quite a bit after. When she was younger. But I don't think there was like one in between. I think it was the next. Yeah. I think. The one with Dennis Quaid. And, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah. I think that was, uh, yeah, that was a good one. Our daughters, they watched that one over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Watched it all the time. Um, let's see. Uh, Wonderful World of Disney was one of the longest running primetime TV series. And it had lots of different names. Yes, it did. It took one break, a short break in uh, running only a few short breaks since 1954. Over that time, it's been known by nine different names. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, sure has. I got nine. Walt Disney's Disneyland, Walt Disney Presents, Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. Which I even remember that. And the reason it was called that was because a lot of the Disney shows were the only shows in color. Wow. The problem with that was most people had black and white TVs. Yeah, that was a new. It was just coming out though. Everything was just coming out, and then it, then for us '70s people, it changed to the Wonderful World of Disney, went to Disney's Wonderful World, Walt Disney, the Disney Sunday Movie, the Magical World of Disney, and the Wonderful World of Disney again, which I think is what it is today. Yeah, it was only on CBS like three seasons. The rest of the time, it's NBC by far, by far. Started now, out on ABC. And now they got their own channel, so. Uh, now they got their own dang channel. They don't need NBC, ABC, CBS. Yeah. Which hopefully, you know, most parents will get the Disney channel. Otherwise, those kids are going to miss out on all kinds of cool stuff. It's crazy what all is on Disney channel now. I mean, they bought everything. Gee, I mean, whiz. I mean, they bought Star Wars. They bought. Marvel. Who owns Disney now? 
Does somebody own Disney? Yeah. Um, and I, don't, I hate to misspeak, but it's something like Sony or... Ah, oh, crumb. <laughs> you better go fix that. <clears throat> Hang on. We lost, we lost our video feed. That'll look like... That'll be fun looking. Yeah. Okay, so that's what happens uh, when there's an earthquake in Oklahoma. I don't know why that fell over. I don't either. It's just, it, that's why I've got it on this ashtray to try to balance it. Well, I guess I, sh I should have stuck it on. Okay, tell everybody, hang on. Hang on, everybody. Hang on, everybody. Okay, if you're watching the video, um, that was a little earthquake there. We'll get it. That's uh, behind the scenes there. I don't know why it... Maybe if I do this, it'll pull it forward. And it won't fall backwards. Is that like a suction cup? Yeah. Why don't you just suction it to the table? Well, because I like to move it around. Because I, if I needed to move it around, it's easier. Oh, okay. I think we, we might have bumped it or just over time it. I think we're good. It's going to be a little different view than what it was, I guess. But <laughs> that's all right. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> I can cut that out if we need to. Oh, no. We're good. Part of the show. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what was we talking about? Uh, oh, like who owns Disney now? Yeah, uh, and again, I said Sony, and it might not be, but it could be. It seems like it's somebody like that. They just, all these uh, big corporations just keep gobbling up each other. Um, it kind of, uh, it was one of the, it was always in the top 10, I believe, through uh, the mid-70s as far as uh uh, ranking, what do I say? Not rankings, but um, anyway, uh, rated, top rated oh, shows. Top rated. Yeah. Uh, and then I, then I think it kind of started falling apart in the mid-70s. Um, well, then, and then the shows became different. They, you know, they got into sci-fi, and I remember the, uh, uh, the Black Hole. That was in the 70s, wasn't it? Uh, possibly, but then they also were going up against 60 Minutes. That's oh. that's one of the things that really started killing them, I think. Oh, because because my dad. So was it, it was it always up against 60 Minutes or no? They, that's why I say in the early 70s it was doing okay, but then 60 Minutes came along. Oh yeah, because I remember when you know most people only had one TV, and when 60 Minutes came on, we had to watch 60 Minutes because my dad wanted to watch it. But by then, I was kind of like, I don't care about Disney. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I was definitely, uh, what, probably watched Disney in elementary and maybe a little bit in junior high. But, yeah, I think by junior high, which would have been mid mid to late 70s, yeah, yeah. it was kind, oh, of, yeah. kind of phasing out. Yeah. Unless there was something good on, something special or something. Yeah, one of our favorite movies. But then, yeah, but we didn't know. But I mean, back then, it, if you wanted to watch, you had to watch half the movie one week and the other. Things are so different these days. Kids nowadays, they just don't know how easy they got it. They just watch it on their phone. Yeah, anytime they want. Everything's on demand now. Um, let's see, let's see. While ratings demand it's, uh, remain strong, consistent NBC, The Wonderful World of Disney... Uh, had an automatic renewal through 1978, but 1975, a slow decline began. Oh, they moved the time as well. Uh, oh. Moved back to 7 p.m. and facing new competition from CBS's 60 Minutes, Disney fell out of the top 20 in 75. So further erosion occurred in early 1977 as ABC successfully launched the teen-oriented drama Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. That's who killed Disney. Oh, I love that. I, I did love I did like I did I, like I think we did start watching that instead of Disney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, facing a threat of cancellation from NBC, itself having become ratings challenged following ABC's rise to number one in the mid-70s. The anthology underwent a major makeover in 1979. Well, by then, it's out of our decade, and we don't yeah. care. Yeah, we don't I did care. notice that they started uh, showing uh, Escape to Witch Mountains in 1980. Yeah, those were good, too. The, yeah. Those were good. Um, so we both agree, probably our favorite act was probably Kurt Russell. 
Yeah. He, I, I pulled up a list here. Kurt Russell Disney movies. 69, but we watched it in the 70s. The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. Uh, 71, The Barefoot Executive, The Monkey. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, 72, Now You See Him, Now You Don't. Yeah. Uh, 73, Super Dad, which I don't really remember that one. I don't really remember that one either. 75, The Strongest Man in the World. Um, 73, Charlie Angel. I don't remember him being in that. Hmm. I don't remember that movie. Um, and that's basically most of them in the 70s. Yeah, in 1970, they had an episode called Disneyland Showtime, and it featured the Osmonds and Kurt Russell. He was visiting Disneyland's Magic Kingdom and its Haunted Mansion. Mm. He made 12 Disney movies altogether. Wow. Uh, some of those include, though, the like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. You haven't seen that, have you? I have not. I rode the ride. Oh, yeah. yeah we'll talk about that next week or yeah. next episode, next podcast. Uh, yeah, so I'm reading off all these episodes, and just hardly any of them are ringing a bell. Um, and the Adventures of Bullwhip Griffin, a 1967 feature film, is about a butler who has adventures in the gold fields of Alaska. It was a three parter. Ooh. Ooh. I do not remember that. They probably got, you know, it probably just got old. I mean, they were just cranking out stuff and, you know, how much stuff can you crank out? And It'd be kind of fun to go back and watch some of these and see how. That's what it should have done, yeah. They might be, you know, Six che- million dollar they, they might be cheesy, your super cheesy <laughs> movies that we thought were, you know. Uh, the Horse in the Gray Flannel Suit. Don't remember that one. Lefty the Dingling Lynx. <laughs> Uh, my goodness. Who came up with these? Who came up with these? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, there's, uh, you guys let us know. Oh, Dad, can I borrow the car? For some reason, I kind of remember that. This 1970 theatrical featurette takes a comical look at the automobile and its effect on American lifestyle. So that would have been like a documentary. Yeah. I, but I could, for some reason, I kind of... Kind of rings a bell. Yeah, I remember them doing those documentaries. Those were kind of cool. They're, you know, like showing you how things got done and, mm-hmm. and, and kind of like how it's made type stuff. How about uh, November 19th, 1972? Nosy, the sweetest skunk in the West. <laughs> <laughs> when was the, uh, when was it? Was the Apple Dumpling Gang? Uh huh. Was that in the 70s? Yeah, and I think that was on. I think they showed some of those on. I had the. Uh, Probably towards the end. Let me see. Don Knotts and, and, and... Tim Conway. Tim Conway, yeah. Those were good. Oh, they were hilarious. Yeah. Um, let's see. The last episode, I believe, in the 70s was The Absent-Minded Professor. Oh, that was good. Yeah. No, no. It was actually... Oh, wow. Uh, the Love Bug, actually, was oh, one, of the, one of the last episodes. I did like The Love Bug. He started in the 60s. Yeah, it's a it's 69 uh, movie, and they showed it in 79 on yeah. Wonderful World of Disney. I remember going to the movie theater. I remember going to the Esquire to watch that. Oh, yeah. And well, not just that, but there was like oh yeah three or more oh, yeah. Herbie. Herbie goes to Monaco or Monte Carlo, and Herbie goes to Paris. And Seems like all the Disney movies in Enid went to the Esquire. Because I yeah. remember seeing all the Apple Dunkling, Dumpling Gangs. I remember seeing Witch Mountain movies there. I remember seeing the uh, Herbie the Love Bug movies there. Do you remember when the Love Bug came to town? I do not. Yeah, there was a, I'm sure there was many of them. Kind of like the Oscar Mayer Wiener movie. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, it, it came to town when one of those, I can't remember which movie it was. Uh, we were all like, oh, I'm going to see the Love Bug! The Love Bug's in town! Herbie! Go see Arby. Very cool. No, I don't remember that. Oh, I, I, I'm, I could have gone and just don't remember. Oh, but you it seems like I would have remembered. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So in '78, uh, it was Mickey's 50th birthday. That was one of the specials. Um, NBC salutes 25 year anniversary of the Wonderful World of Disney. Yeah, just a whole bunch of plethora of uh, different episodes. I'm going to look up, see if I can look it up. What are you looking up? When Herbie came. 
Oh. Um, trying to see no. if there was <laughs> the herb house pulled up. I will find it later. Maybe I can talk about it next podcast. <laughs> the Shaggy Dog was in 78. A suburban teenager finds a magic ring that spontaneously causes him to turn into a dog. So what was the Shaggy DA? Was that the same? No, kid? I think the Shaggy DA was um, Dean. Johnson. Dean. Do- Dean. He was in a bunch of those. Yeah. I think it was a Dean guy, wasn't that? I think. Dean, Dean, Dean. I think that Dean, was who I'm thinking of. Dean. Um, Dean. 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 Somebody's <laughs> screaming at their device. <laughs> Dean. 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 Uh, Apple Dunkman Gang was in 76 when they showed it. The Biscuit Eater. 20,000 Leagues Dean Jones. Under the, Dean Jones. Okay. 20,000 Leagues. Oh, here Oh, here was something I was going to correct real quick. Um, on a prior episode of, I think, Buzzhead Radio. So I guess it doesn't really matter for this show. Did we talk about um, Steamboat Willie and Mickey Mouse being mm-hmm. public domain on this show or was it just on Buzzhead Radio? If you, I, I don't think we talked about it on here. If you guys didn't know, the copyright ran out for the black and white movie Steamboat Willie, which has Mickey Mouse in a earlier form in it. I was kind of wrong when I was talking about that. Uh-oh. He wasn't Steamboat Willie. The movie was called Steamboat Willie. It was Mickey Mouse in Steamboat Willie. I thought Steamboat Willie was the boat. It may have been. So so you actually, it actually is a version of Mickey Mouse. But you can't say, you can't, so, so the thing is now that the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey Mouse is in the public domain, you can use those designs for whatever you want and not get in trouble. But you can't use the name Mickey Mouse because it's oh. trademarked. So... Um, so anyway, yeah, didn't they make a horror movie? They're about to. They they made a when Winnie the Pooh oh, became public was, domain. They made a horror movie with Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Now they're going to make one with Mickey Mouse. I think, was it like Rob Zombie or something? Or something? I don't. I, so I don't know. But so what? What a lot of people don't realize is like Cinderella, Winnie the Pooh, um, gosh, Robin Hood. So many of these stories that you think of as being Disney stories yeah. aren't weren't Disney stories. They took old European book stories and made cartoons and movies out of them, and then when they made their version of those, they copyrighted them. So Winnie the Pooh wasn't really that that drawing of Winnie the Pooh that Disney did is copyrighted by Disney, but now Winnie the Pooh the book the original book is also in public domain. So you can make up your own character of Winnie the Pooh now, and actually, and use the Winnie the Pooh name. Oh, really? Yeah. So I could make all I could make as much Winnie the Pooh merchandise and sell it as I want. And Tigger goes public domain this month, so Tigger will be added as well. Uh, so if you're interested in that stuff, listen to Buzzhead Radio like one or two episodes ago, and we I listed a whole bunch of famous characters that are now public domain. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Yeah, I, I don't know if they're public domain yet, but they will be. But if the book is, then you can't, yeah, so whatever book is 95 years old, you can, it's public domain now. Now they've changed the, the rules for copyright since 1978. Now, after 1978, it's you get a copyright something for the life of the creator plus 70 years. Whereas prior to 78, it was 95 years. The thing about um, this first version of Mickey Mouse, it was it expired in 84, I think. And Disney was so powerful and had such good lawyers, they drug it out for another 20 years. I remember that. And, and now I think they just finally... They've got the trademark and the new look on Mickey Mouse, and I think they're making most of their money doing 
non Mickey Mouse stuff anymore that I, they're not as worried about uh, Mickey as they used to be. So anyway, so if you're so I will be doing some um, Steamboat Willie looking Mickey Mouse designs uh, soon. So anyway, how are we doing on time over there? Oh, we're good whenever. Okay, you got any other specifics on the wonderful world of Disney? No. <clears throat> Uh, I mean, there are the Barefoot Executive, uh, tons and tons and tons of. It'd be kind of interesting to go back and watch some of these. I like to watch the old Kurt Russell ones. Yeah. Uh, what about the one, uh, Jan Michael Vincent? He was in some. Was that in the same? Yeah, he was in one that was called, I think, The World's Greatest Athlete. Yeah. And I don't know what. You, it had to be the 70s. It had to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they found him over in, like, Africa or uh -huh. something. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> and he didn't talk? Yeah. I don't think he... Did he say... I think it? eventually he did. Maybe. I think. I don't... It's been a while. I wonder if that one was on... I'm not seeing it here, but uh, there's so many to go through. I don't have time to go through them all. Um, so anyway, you guys let us know uh, if you guys remember a specific episode or movie or, or whatever. And then what was on in Oklahoma right before Disney, or was it after? Uh, Mutual of Omaha's uh, Wild, Wild Kingdom. Kingdom. Was that on, it was on Sunday night. That was, was it, definitely NBC, yeah. Was that on before Wonderful World of Disney? Or was it on? I would think it would have been after. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, Kingdom. with was Marlon it? Perkins. Marlon Perkins, was it Marlon Perkins? <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. Mer Marlon? Marlon Perkins, I think. <laughs> uh, we'll have to look that up. But I'll have to, we'll have to dig up a TV guide and see when, because it seems like they were on, one was on after the other. I don't remember which. But if Disney was on at six, News was probably on at five. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was a 30-minute show on at 5.30. For some reason, it seems to me like it was on before. It was Marlon Perkins. It was Marlon Perkins. He was like, oh, <clears throat> oh, the predecessor to like Steve Irwin. Yeah. He did all the animal stuff. He's on 18 seasons. 18 seasons, wow. Yeah, he was like the Doc Tari, the John Wayne. Of... Yeah, he had a funny accent. Seems like I remember him. Well, that, that, that'll probably have to be its own episode, too. Um... Because I don't, I remember the show. They were always on a safari hunting some animal, but I don't really remember specifically what they were doing or what or what or what or what. Uh, I think that's about all I've got on. Yeah, I was looking around quicker. It's on Sunday nights. Talk about um, good advertising. I st we all remember Mutual of Omaha's mm -hmm. Wild Kingdom. Yeah, what's burning now? I can't find it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> we'll, we'll find out. Or you guys let us know. I'm sure somebody's screaming right now at their device. And if you are, don't waste it. Call in 580-541-3805 or text 580-541-3805 or email me at buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. Dave, where are you? Dave. Dave, where are you? Are you? Did we lose you? Sorry, Dave. I know we confused Dave. I apologize. It probably confused everybody else. Ah, there it goes again. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't touching nothing. Okay, well, as far as the audio podcast, we're going to get out of here. Sure, sure. See ya. <laughs> Oops. Ah. 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 I'm leaving that in. I'm leaving that in. Yeah, I think the table's just too unstable for my ashtray. Well, even even just doing stuff on the floor, shake you know. Yeah. Shakes it. Okay, say goodbye. Oh, this is the this is Todd's studio, real quick. My Elvis. This will this will be behind the some behind the scenes. There's a uh, Johnny Depp, and there's the. You guys don't really get to see the Elvis rug too it's much. It's not a rug. No, it's not. Well, it's actually, it's a rug, but I couldn't bring myself to put it on the floor and walk on. Uh, got some Elvis stuff there. You guys don't get to see all the Elvis stuff. There's our band picture. There's a band picture. A funky piece of art. Um, there's the scary, scary Elvis. Hey, be careful what you do back there. You got a microphone on.
Okay, so there's Todd's studio. Um, okay, see you guys.